looking for the lamb my name is daniel vallis and welcome to our channel thank you for your prayers i've been busy the past few days with different obligations that i had to tend to but those are now over and lord willing we can continue with our regular schedule but i do want to thank you for your prayers of support and for those who support this ministry in so many ways i was thinking about you this whole past week because i wanted to get back to you and strengthen you and encourage you just like you have done for me and so again i was thinking about you so much and i did miss you and thank you so much for your prayers i was able to go out tonight and just look up at the stars and even this past week i got to really spend some good time looking up at the stars at night and talking with people about the stars and the signs going on this week seeing the moon and jupiter and virgo and just talking about how the heavens declare the glory of god and how we are at an amazing time right now with multiple signs going on and multiple things being shown us in the heavens by the lights that god created and placed in the firmament to be signs and we've been studying and looking at these signs that have captured our attention on our wise men's journey for the past year and ten months we've learned so much and there are so many things ongoing still and signs that tell us that this is an important time things are happening and we need to be paying attention and living in light of the time here is a picture of jupiter in virgo that i was able to take tonight about eight thirty and it was almost directly overhead along with leo the lion very easy to see and spot and here's again what the different lines look like jupiter is in the torso rehearsing the pregnancy picture right now it's moving in a westward direction though it's about to reach station two in about three weeks on june ninth and then it'll switch direction and start going in a prograde easterly direction but when i went out and looked at the horizon about eight thirty is interesting to note how much the skies have changed over the past few weeks whereas before we could see orion shortly after sunset right now orion is quickly going below the horizon at sunset and pleiades is lost in the sun's glare right now at sunset and taurus is still just sticking out a little bit by the time the stars really start coming out so the constellations that we've been looking at they're quickly going below the horizon but that tells us that the sun is at those places right now those significant constellations when we look on stellarium right at the moment of sunset when it's hitting the horizon and going below it orion is still technically above it but there's still all the light from the day still and just the glare and so by the time it gets dark enough for the stars to come out orion has already sunk down low in the sky and at sunset taurus is still pretty well above but it's quickly going down below as it gets darker when we turn off the ground and sky for a moment at the moment of sunset this gives you a better idea of this lets us know that the sun is entering the stars associated with taurus the bull and getting pretty close to pleiades the seven stars associated with the seven churches we also see sirius over there that's usually bright and visible for a while after sunset once the stars come out but then normally how you would be directed toward the three stars we can't see the three stars now because by the time it gets dark enough orion has already gone down enough to where only sirius is generally seen and beto jews is there as well so it's interesting that we've been studying these signs and we know what they are in relation to each other and knowing where they are now close to sunset tells us that the sun is in these significant portions and it's right now between the lamb the ram aries and pleiades the seven stars it's in this section this portion of the sky associated with the lamb of god this gives you a slightly better view of where things are a relation right now aries the lamb the ram along the line that the heavens declare and the sun as a bridegroom is right now between the lamb and pleiades the seven churches so this is interesting just with everything going on right now to consider the lamb of god our redeemer and the sun which is as a bridegroom is right now between both of these significant reminder pictures and this is who we are expecting we're expecting our bridegroom we're expecting our beloved we've talked about the events at crucifixion the time of christ about how the celestial signs and the celestial lights at that time 
the sun which is as a bridegroom again was bringing attention to this constellation this sign that the heavens declare at this time when the lamb of god was being crucified and the important events related to christ's first time happened in this area of the sky between the lamb and even taurus the bull but the most important day that sticks out is the day of crucifixion when the sun was darkened and this is significant when we have studied where the sun was in the sky and what the world saw when the sun was darkened we've also talked about how they saw a bloody moon at that time too as well and this is what peter referenced that they all saw and again significantly the sun being darkened and for three hours the world looking up and having their attention drawn to the lamb the ram that was being crucified at that very moment even the heavens were declaring the lamb of god at this important time the one who was slain and that's what even this major star in the constellation is associated with being slain the lamb who was slain and the world's attention was drawn toward and looking up and they were lifting up their heads at the lamb of god the redeemer on the day of crucifixion and so as we understand how christ came to bear the sins of many and he died on the cross and rose again and we understand the significant prophetic time of how the world's attention was drawn to the celestial heavens at this time we have to take that into consideration when we study what happened the first time as we look for him to come the second time understanding the first time is crucial to understanding the timing of when we should be looking up and looking for him to return the second time looking for our redeemer our bridegroom our beloved to return and so we're looking at a period a time frame here where christ fulfilled prophecy to the day with the triumphal entry and so it's very significant that the lamb of god had arrived for inspection as they pass over lamb then the celestial events of crucifixion with the sun being darkened and that transpiring all the way up to ascension when again the disciples attention was drawn upward they were looking upward they were watching the personification of the lamb of god jesus christ ascend into the heavens where they had just a few days before seen celestial reminders of the lamb of god the sign in the heavens and so this is an important time frame of christ's first time here and then right about at the edge of the screen there is where the sun would be on pentecost which is very interesting because on pentecost peter and the disciples were looking back at the events that had happened and were reminding the people there at jerusalem what they had seen a few days before that and they were even reminding them of ascension as well so it's interesting that on crucifixion the world is looking up and then on ascension they are looking up and then on pentecost they're looking back at what they looked up at so this is really important for us to keep in mind this entire time is all about looking up for our redeemer the lamb of god this is an amazing time frame on the celestial clock and where we are right now again right now the sun is between aries the lamb the ram and pleiades the seven stars associated with the seven churches and we're right in the middle of this time frame this historic and prophetic time frame and so as we are looking for him the second time it's to catch our attention that we need to be looking up right now in this same time frame this historic time frame looking for our bridegroom to come for his bride this is also the time when the lamb of god was telling his disciples that he is the bread come down from heaven and that he would also ascend up into heaven this is the time of the manna come down from heaven this is an incredible time so many things so many pictures that our redeemer told us to consider when we remember what happened the first time and the pictures that the lamb of god fulfilled the one who was born in the house of bread born in bethlehem the lamb of god who was born and declared even at the place associated with the lambs destined for the temple we must not forget how important this time is relating to the lamb our bridegroom our redeemer again we were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold we were redeemed with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot and this is what peter was reminding the churches about don't ever forget the picture that we are redeemed by the lamb of god he is our redeemer 
when we look up and we're looking for the signs of our redemption, it's going to be centered around looking up for the Lamb of God. And this is even what the Lamb of God himself said and told his disciples. And when these things, these prophetic things, begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. What's so amazing about this passage is he was telling them this before he even died on the cross. He had entered into Jerusalem. He had fulfilled the triumphal entry. And in this window of time between the triumphal entry and Passover, he was talking to his disciples about prophetic things and how one day in the distant future, his disciples would be looking up and lifting up their heads when they saw prophetic things come together. And what they would be looking for is the signs of their redemption. And by looking up and lifting up our heads, we who are seeing these things come together, we are also seeing the signs relating to our redemption. We are looking at the celestial lights that are the signs that tell us the story of our Redeemer in the time frame of redemption. And so we are looking up and we know that our redemption draweth nigh. And we are reminded of the Lamb of God who came to redeem us. And so we are looking for him the second time in this time frame when he told us to be watching and expecting him. But again, take note that he's telling them the concept of looking up and seeing and understanding that redemption draweth nigh. The pickup of the purchased possession draweth nigh. And in order to understand that and draw that conclusion, you have to understand the picture that you're looking at. But he was telling them this before he even died on the cross. They did know that he was the Lamb of God, though. And in just a few days and hours, the events of the crucifixion and the resurrection would be impressed upon their minds as celestial signs that they saw on the day of the crucifixion. And then they would even remember what they saw when they looked up into the heavens on the day of ascension as well. Multiple times in just these few days here within this celestial time frame, they were looking up at very significant events. And this is what they remembered, and this is what they told other people they need to remember as well. Our redemption, the signs of our redemption, are associated with this time and these celestial signs. In the book of Acts, the day of Pentecost, we've covered this before, how Peter was telling the crowd about these signs in the sun and the moon that they saw, that they knew about. They knew about what Christ did on the cross. And Peter goes on to explain how Christ came to die. He was going to be slain, but then how also he was raised up. And then Peter even alludes to how he ascended into heaven as well. The ascension which happened just a few days before the day of Pentecost. And so again, he's reminding the people that they were looking up. They saw all these events. And Peter was reminding them that Jesus Christ came for the remission of sins. He came to be the Redeemer. He came to be the Lamb of God, just like was prophesied. He came on the day they crucified him. They buried him. He rose again. He came to be the Redeemer. He came to be the Passover Lamb. And when Peter rehearsed all this for them and reminded them of the pictures of the celestial signs that they saw and what happened, it helped explain and bring it together for them to where they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and they put their faith and trust in him. On the day of Pentecost, they were looking back at what Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, did, both with redemption and also with the signs that went with it. And so this is what we need to consider when we look at the time right now. We have been studying what Christ did the first time when he came, and we've been looking at the parallels of the dates and the time and observing the different feast shadows and seeing the harvest times where we're at right now and understanding when manna was sent down and when Christ was talking about manna. But we also see the sun in Aries, the ram lamb right now, drawing close to Pleiades at this time. And we're reminded of the events that Peter reminded them at Pentecost about. We're at a time when we are even told to be looking for our Redeemer. We've heard so many events and prophetic events and geopolitical events. We've had so many things telling us time is running out. We need to be looking up now. And so when we look up, what do we see? Primarily right now, our attention is drawn to the Lamb. Because we're at a time on the biblical calendar that is all about the Lamb, what the Lamb of God did when he was here on earth, how he was offered to bear the sins of many, and we're looking for him to appear the second time to pick up his purchased possession. But it all revolves around the Lamb, understanding the Lamb of God. And we have the celestial signs reminding us of the one who was offered to bear the sins of many, 
And this is the story we see when we look up. And so here in Christ's first time, when he was making all these statements about looking up, we are again reminded that he made those statements right after the triumphal entry, but before he died on the cross. So right at the beginning of this time from here that we've been looking at, of Christ's first time, right at the beginning, he's telling them and reminding them and laying a foundation of one day you're going to be looking up and you're going to be looking for the signs of your redemption. Which means, disciples, you're going to have to understand the pictures that are used in your redemption. One day you'll be able to look up and you'll be able to tell that your redemption draweth nigh. So you better be paying attention and looking up. And it was only a few days and hours after that that he was offered as a Passover lamb. The promised lamb that even Abraham talked about. God shall provide himself a lamb. And it was during this event on the cross when the sun was darkened and the entire world looked up at the area of the sky associated with the lamb ram for three hours. Think about that. They're looking up and they see the celestial sign for three hours. They had plenty of time to think about it. And they were reminded that just a few days ago, the Lamb of God told us we would be looking up and lifting up our heads. And that one day we will see that our redemption draweth nigh. And we're at a time right now, we're looking up. And I see a sign that reminds me directly of the Lamb of God. Is this what we're going to see in the future? No doubt that was going through their mind because that's the only sign they, they were seeing when they looked up and they lift up their heads right at that time. They made that connection because this is what they talked about on the day of Pentecost. Looking back, they made this connection of the celestial signs and events that were happening on this day with the Lamb of God. They made the connection here. The signs of our redemption are connected to the Lamb of God. The Lamb is the picture. And then on the day of ascension, they were again looking up into the heavens. The sun was at a different point then. It was over historically in the horns of the bull. But they were looking up at the literal Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, as he ascended into the heavens, as he was taken up. And that's how they viewed him as the Lamb of God. And they were watching him go into the heavens and keeping in mind they had seen just a few days before that the events with the Passover lamb and how he was slain. And they saw the celestial heavens with the lamb in the heavens. And then on the day of ascension they're seeing the lamb of God in the human form ascend into the heavens. Keeping in mind that they saw the lamb in the heavens just a few days before that. Multiple references here of looking up and seeing signs of redemption associated with Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. And this is what they were reminding them about on the day of Pentecost. Peter was basically saying, remember the signs that you saw connected with your promised Redeemer. The day of Pentecost was looking back at what they saw when they did look up, when they did observe the prophetic events being fulfilled, the celestial events ascending into heaven, going up into heaven, the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was in the heavens, the Lamb of God going into the heavens. It's all related to the picture of the Lamb of God. This is the picture of our redemption. This is who redeemed us. And so as we look for him the second time, when we understand Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and the pictures and the celestial signs that were seen at that time, it should catch our attention that we're at a rehearsal and a time frame of those same celestial signs now right in this morning time of the year when we are told to be watching for him. And this is what Jesus emphasized to his disciples and to us. We will be able to look up. We will be able to lift up our heads. And this is what he wants us to do. He wants us to look up. He wants us to look at what are the heavens declaring. They're declaring the glory of God. And especially when we consider the pictures of the bridegroom. When we look up, what do we see at this time? What do we see when we're at a time when he even told us to be watching for him? When we hear signs and warnings that he is coming, we should then look up and lift up our heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. And the more we understand what happened the first time, when we look up, we will see more than just celestial signs. We will have an understanding of the meaning and the significance of the events that transpired that's connected to these signs. We'll have an understanding and the correlation between the one, the Messiah who was even connected to these signs, we will be able to put ourselves into the shoes of the disciples as they looked up and they saw all these signs happening at this time too. We'll have a significance of why Peter saw it so important to remind the people of what happened on the day when Christ was offered to bear the sins of many.
There are celestial signs that remind us of our redemption. And when we see these signs rehearsed, at a time when he told us to be looking for him, we know that our redemption draweth nigh, because we are looking for the Lamb of God. In Revelation chapter 5, it paints a beautiful picture of those redeemed by Jesus Christ in the throne room of God, and it should catch our attention that they're using the familiar pictures of redemption relating to the Lamb. This is the identity of Jesus Christ even in heaven, even in the throne room of God, he is associated with one singular identity, the Lamb, the Lamb of God. You're familiar with how it starts out, Weep not, behold the Lion of the tribe of Judah. But take note that John is being introduced to a title here, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. John does not see a lion. He's just told that's what his title is. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the Root of David. Those are his titles. But then notice, John points out that he physically sees a lamb as it had been slain. And so, on one hand, he's told a title, but then he sees a visual representation associated with the lamb. Our Redeemer is associated with the picture of a lamb, and he's even called the Lamb of God. So when we're looking for our redemption to draw nigh, and we know he's at the door, what pictures should we see the celestial heavens declaring? It should relate to the identity of the Messiah. It should relate to Jesus Christ. It should relate to the Lamb. And notice in this passage, it goes on and on, multiple times emphasizing the Lamb. This is his identity. This is the identity of our Redeemer. The identity of the one we are looking to appear the second time. The Lamb of God. This is the one who has redeemed us. This is the one that was slain. This is the one that was offered on our behalf. He has redeemed us to God by his blood, the Lamb of God. And so when we look up into the heavens, we see a story told, reminding us of what Christ did the first time he came, how he was offered to bear the sins of many. And we are looking for him to appear the second time. And we are told to look up, for our redemption draweth nigh. And here's our redemption. Is it Jerusalem? No. Is it Israel? No. Is it a woman? No. What sign of redemption are we looking for when we look up into the heavens? Is it a priest? No. Is it saints? No. Is it the Pope? No. What is associated with our redemption? The Lamb of God. That's the only thing we're looking for when we look up. We're looking for the story of the Lamb of God who was offered to bear the sins of many. The one who died to pay our atonement. The one who paid the bride price. This is the one who's coming back for us. The Lamb of God. And one day in eternity, even in the throne room of God, he will still be associated with this same singular identity. The signs do not change. He will always be associated and known as the Lamb of God. And this is who we should be looking up for. The Lamb of God. And we're at a time when Christ was even telling his disciples to be looking up for signs of redemption. We're at a time when the world looked up on the day of crucifixion at signs in the heavens associated with the Lamb of God. We're at a time when the disciples were looking at the Lamb of God ascend into the heavens. Right near a time when the Lamb of God told them that he was the bread of life and he would be ascending into heaven. And we're nearing a time also when the disciples looked back and reminded people of what they did see about the Redeemer, the Lamb of God who did ascend into the heavens. We're looking for him to return in like manner as he went into heaven. We're looking up for him to return. And this is what we are told to do. He has told us so many things of what we should be looking for, what we should be listening for, and what we should be doing when we see those things beginning to come to pass, and how we should be looking up, and what we should be looking for. We are looking for him to return the second time. If you have not yet, definitely download our When to Watch booklet. We are watching for the Lord's return, the return of the Lamb of God. And he has told us that he is returning, and that we need to make ourselves ready. We have so many celestial signs telling us right now that our Redeemer is returning, that he's drawing nigh, he's at the doors. What are we doing? Are we living in light that our Lord is returning? That our Bridegroom, that our Redeemer is returning? He has told us, be ye ready. We should be living like it. We should be looking for him, not just with our eyes, but with our heart and with our life. 
For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. What is our blessed hope? It's our Redeemer, the one who redeemed us from all iniquity, who purified unto himself a peculiar people. And when we let it sink in what he has done for us, our Savior, our Redeemer, we should be zealous of good works. We should be denying ungodliness and worldly lust, living in light that our Redeemer has saved us from that. And so we cling to him, our Redeemer, shining bright like him, casting off the works of darkness, trimming our lamps, and putting on the armor of light so that the world can see Christ in us, and so that Christ can see himself in us as well. He's looking for a peculiar people who are zealous of good works. We've heard the trumpet calls at midnight. The time we're at, the prophetic events, the geopolitical events, the celestial signs. So much telling us our bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And so what we need to do is we need to rise up. We need to trim our lamps. We need to put on the armor of light. We need to shine bright, and we need to go forward and we need to draw an eye to him. And so together, we exhort one another, we encourage one another and to love and do good works, and together we rise up and we go forward together, serving Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, first and highest above all else. Maranatha.